everyone. So today I'm planning on taking you through the uh, floor questions as well as the weakness questions. I bundled those two together because the way for solving them is very similar and the way that you need to think about them is very similar. So before I take you through some example questions, I want to give you a template of basically some guidelines on what you should look at first, um, how you should be considering these questions. So let's get right into it. Um, so first I want to take you through how, what kind of flaws are the most common. So unlike some of the other questions we looked at before, there is only sort of a certain number of typical flaws you might find in an argument. Obviously there is the one or two unique case, but generally it kind of falls into these uh, five types of flaw. Um, so let's, let me take you through them. So the first one is going to be the two trends uh, flaw. So what, that, what I mean by that is like, let's say you have been given a piece of data, right, saying that uh, A is seen to be increasing, at the same time B is increasing, and then the flaw, the conclusion, so remember that the flaw comes from the argument not making sense in forming that main conclusion or the conclusion of whatever it is. So in this case, the flaw is coming from, we've got A is increasing, B is increasing, and then we have some sort of main conclusion. And that conclusion tends to be A is causing B, or B is causing A, or some forcing some relationship between the two, okay? So the first typical flaw you're gonna get is that A is not causing B, it is in fact the other way around, or there can be a, set, a third factor C, which is causing both, okay? And that is the most typical flaw. So for example, um, I'm gonna take you through the example of foxes. So let's say that the number of foxes in London has been seen to be increasing. At the same time, uh, bin collection has been reduced to two times a week. Therefore, the, pro the, bin, uh, the fact that there is more rubbish on the streets is causing the number of foxes to increase or something like that, right? However, in this case, a, a flaw that you could point out is to say, um, there may be an outside factor that is causing this to be the case. There is an outside factor that is causing both uh, the fox population to go up at the same time we are also cutting spending on our bin collections. Now the flaw is that the weakness, when they ask you to identify the weakness, basically you're just looking for an example of the flaw. So the weakness itself would be there is an outside factor that may be contributing to both statistics. Uh, the flaw, sorry, yeah, is that, and then the weakness would be something like the government has been forced to cut spending on controlling the fox population um, due to budget constraints or something. That would be identify the weakness and the flaw is basically you're looking for an explanation of what it is, if that makes sense. So that's the first main, uh, first type of uh, flaw that you may uh, discover whilst you're doing this exam. The second type is when the argument uses a very specific example and then that is the entire basis of, the, of their argument. Now I want you to differentiate that between being given an argument and then it is exemplified through something. That's absolutely fine. It is when the entire argument is based upon very specific example that is a problem. So you don't want to generalize too much in the actual argument. So for example, I put up another example here. So if we have something like um, beach holidays are best than mountain holidays being the um, conclusion, and then what the argument is, nothing else is given to you. All we see is a study of holidaymakers in the Maldives uh, stated that they preferred their beach holiday over mountain holidays. So you can see that that's, there's no kind of reasoning So you can see there that there's no kind of reasoning given, it's just purely based on the data collected there. And even if there were reasoning given, let's say, let's say the people in the Maldives uh, claimed beach holidays were better due to the happiness they feel from being in the sun. Um, that's still not enough because we're basing it upon one study. Now, if there's another argument given to you, something like, you know, in the Maldives and then also in Bahamas and then also here and here and here, that's completely fine because we're collecting, we're presenting enough of an argument that this is the case and this is something that's generally supported. It's when we're looking at one specific example, something that it could be, that one case could be an anomalous thing, then that is a flaw in the argument, okay? Now, again, how could this appear on the weakness side? Well, as I said, the weakness is the exemplification of the flaw. So in this case, it could be something like, uh, maybe uh, point A would say, 
another study in the Bahamas found this not to be the case, or something like that. That would be the weakness. Okay, so the first point that I wanted to talk to you about is the completeness of the argument. So what we mean by that is, has there been a step in the reasoning that has missed? So have we gone from A to B and then straight to D and we've missed out C? If that is the case, that would also be a very typical flaw. So consider how you structure your own argument and thinking about is it complete or not? So was everything considered fairly, essentially, okay? So let's go through another example. So I've made them really as simple as possible in terms of the content and the language, just so you can get down to the real point of what this argument is trying to say. So in, my, in this case, I'm saying, Sandra and Tim, they're deciding between a running club and a swimming club. The next sentence is saying, running can be bad for your knees, right? And therefore, they should join swimming club. From there, it's, it should be pretty obvious for you guys that the point that's been missed there is, okay, but what about swimming? So uh, what a, how do we know that swimming is not worse, for example, right? That's an incomplete argument. We're not saying it's wrong. We're not saying that running isn't bad for your knees, but we're saying that this is insufficient to draw that conclusion. So uh, basically the flaw, if it was an identify the flaw question, what you, the sentence you would be looking for would be something like, um, the uh, argument fails to take into account uh, but that swimming may also have uh, costs to it, okay? Or it fails to take into account that swimming may be worse for your knees than running or something. Now, if this were the same argument, but then you're given an identify a weakness uh, question, then again, you're looking for an example of it. So a weakness uh, could be something like, um, you know, swimming is actually bad for your knees or something like that. that or it may appear in that first form actually, but generally we're looking for an actual sentence that would weaken that argument uh, directly, okay? So would weaken the argument, would be saying something like swimming is in fact much worse for your knees than running. Now, uh, two more to go. So number, the fourth one I want to talk about is equating two ideas as exactly the same thing. So sometimes arguments will use terms and definitions, ideas quite interchangeably in drawing conclusions. Um, so in the argument, they'll use a certain language and then even when it's not precisely the same thing, they'll draw a conclusion from that. So what I mean by that is I think an example would be the easiest to do that with. So it would be maybe equating being unhappy to being something um, difficult, for example. So here I've said Martha finds it difficult to concentrate on reading. Um, Martha uh, shouldn't be forced to read because no child should be forced to do something that makes them unhappy. So you can see we've got sort of a weakness there because we've said basically that difficult to concentrate is going to be equi uh, equal to happy. So any time that an argument uses um, kind of subjective words or sort of adjectives or anything like this and then draws uh, and then basically equates them to each other, that is a flaw in the argument because you're missing something there, okay? Uh, the final one that I want to talk to you about is if one side is wrong, it doesn't mean the other side is right. So that is a classic flaw that you can find, is that they'll say something along the lines of, um, you know, A is, uh, A has uh, this kind of uh, flaw, or like there's something wrong with A, therefore we should only let B do something, okay? And so an example of that would be something like, so the dogs are found to be bad at stacking up their blocks, um, therefore, only cats should stack blocks. You can see there's an issue there because, you know, we haven't considered that the cats may also have issues with that. So the flaw would be, identify the flaw would be the other side has not been considered, and then identify a weak, something that would weaken the argument would be something like the cats were also found to be bad at st stacking blocks, okay? So a lot of this has kind of simplified down, I've tried to simplify it down as much as possible for you, but hopefully some of this should become more clear as we try to go through some questions. So I just want to take you through the same paper that I did in my most recent video.